Hello, this is Jim McKeith, Developer Evangelist for Room Object Software. Today we're going to take a quick look at DA SQL. If you have worked with databases in the past few decades, then you are familiar with SQL. Short for Structured Query Language, it is designed for working with sets of data like those found in Relational Database Management Systems. One of the main advantages of a middle tier is that it encapsulates and enforces all the business rules. Typically that means all the SQL belongs in the middle tier. However, in the client, you are still working with these sets of data. And SQL is the natural choice for that. Allowing the client to execute SQL statements against the database bypasses the business logic in the middle tier. And that is a very bad thing. The solution to all this is DA SQL. DA SQL allows SQL functionality on sets of data in the client. Unlike regular SQL, DA SQL is executed against the schema on the middle tier. It is completely unaware of the database. This allows all the business logic to remain enforced, but the client still has the flexibility of SQL. You can see in this DA SQL statement that the client is selecting all the columns from the customer's table for a specific ID. That DA SQL is executed against the schema, which in turn creates a new SQL statement based on the business rules which is sent to the database. This statement only selects specific columns and from a differently named table. Additionally, it restricts the query to a specific region. DA SQL is a feature of Data Abstract. You can use it in clients for any platform Data Abstract supports with .NET, Delphi, or Xcode. The server, however, needs to be written in .NET. Or you can use the cross-platform reusable relativity server that is available for all platforms. Let's take a quick look at DA SQL in action. I'm running the PC Trade sample server that ships with Data Abstract. I've also opened the PC Trade schema in Schema Modeler. Now you can see here that the client's data table that is exposed to the client is mapped to the customer's table in the database. This is an example of having a different representation of the data than is actually in the database. It could be because you've moved from one database to another or because you're trying to hide the naming in the database. But the key here is on the client, we'll refer to it as clients, but in the database, it is actually the customer's table. We're gonna go ahead and launch the DA SQL sample application we have. This is the one in C Sharp for .NET. We have a similar application in Delphi and Xcode as well as Delphi Prism. I'm going to run the server here next to the client so you can see the results on the server as I select from it. So this is just a simple select all the columns from the client's table. Now here's the results that we got back. On the server we can see, we sent select all from clients, but on the server it ran select these specific columns from the customer's table, because remember clients maps to the customer's table. Another one here just with the less columns specified. There are other, here we can do a, uh, a where statement within in it. And we see again, it's just mapped to the columns in the server. The more interesting stuff is we get down here to joins, for example. And we can do a join with a condition in the where. Gets the data back. Here's the SQL that was written in the client. And here is after the schema recreated it, enforcing all the business logic here. Here's an inner join on three tables, kind of an example of some of the more complex stuff you can do. Again, works fine. The SQL we sent and the SQL that is ran on the server. You could also do top and skip, and this is actually kind of interesting. I'll do a top and skip on this one. So you're gonna notice it uses the select top three, skip one, those columns from clients. I run this. It runs as expected. On the server though, the SQL that we ran 
is limit three offset one, and that's because we're running against SQLite, and SQLite uses a different syntax. And so here on the client, we don't need to know what, what database server we're running against or the syntax it uses. We just use this standard syntax that is defined in the wiki, and it will translate it to whatever database we're connecting to. So if we were to change databases, the SQL in the client doesn't need to change because the DA SQL that's running in the client runs against the schema in the middle tier. It does not run against the database server. I'll go ahead and run the uh, Delphi example here as well. Using the same SQL statements here. You see they behave exactly the same. Interjoining three tables. Just to show you that the same SQL works with multiple clients. Now, if we want to look at how this works, the key here is the table request info v6, and it has a SQL property on it where you can put the SQL in. And then you just simply pass it to the remote data adapters fill method. Here is the L info, which is the table request info and that executes the DA SQL against the middle tier. In Delphi, it's very similar. You see again here, table request info v6, except the difference is we put it in an array of table request infos. That way you can pass multiple into it. The, let me just show you here for Xcode. Xcode's actually a little simpler, that you don't have to create the structure you just simply pass the SQL value in here to SQL field and make a call to begin get data table with SQL on the remote data adapter. All these samples are available in the wiki. Here's the Delphi version, here's the .NET version, and there's also a listing of supported SQL syntax also in the documentation wiki. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to DA SQL, and I'm sure you will find a use for it in your data abstract applications. <laughs>